Today, we're gonna turbo swap the Phoenix using the new Inspire 3D Scanner from RevoPoint. What's going on everyone? Today, we're back with another 3D scanning video. Today, what we're going to do is we're gonna use the newest release from RevoPoint. This is the Inspire. And we're gonna use it to scan the underside of the front of this VS410 Phoenix so that we can develop an engine bay cover to put up front there. And then at the end of it, I can share that file with you guys in case you wanna dress up your own Phoenix. At this point, you've seen a handful of 3D scanners on my channel, and they can all look fairly similar, and really the experience that differs most between them oftentimes lies in the software and just how the hardware interacts with the software. This one from RevoPoint, I've had for a short time now, done a handful of scans, but I've seen a lot of improvement in the software already since I initially got it. So constant updates to the software have happened with most of the scanners that I've owned, and every time they've felt like an improvement. This one, some of the selling points of it are that it's capturing a larger area in one view at a time. Sometimes with scanners, you can end up scanning a very small area as you're moving around and can make it difficult to try and capture everything and get accurate results. This one is supposed to select a larger area, should help with tracking also. Also, this is the first 3D scanner that I've had that has actually benefited from the use of marking dots. This scanner came with a handful of accessories here, but you may have seen these before. These are a marking dot, and oftentimes people have used marking dots even with scanners that aren't technically you know, made to be used with them. High-end scanners oftentimes use these, but the more consumer grade ones weren't necessarily optimized for that. This one now is, as it adds an extra infrared light alongside the capture camera, so it helps with tracking for you know one of the first times with this type of scanner, at least that I've owned. It also comes with a couple of other items. This is a little marker board. I believe this can also be used for calibration. This kind of uses the same type of tech as those little individual marking dots. You can set this up and it just gives you a solid background so that it can help make sure that it keeps its orientation in the correct spot. It comes with a turntable. These are just USB powered. You just turn it on and then it's got a speed adjustment on the side there. The other 3D scanners that I've got have never had a speed adjustment, so that's nice to see. And then it's got a mat that goes on top of the actual you know, turntable there as well, just to again add some of those tracking dots to improve scanning quality. Lastly, a much larger version of the things that we just talked about. This is just a great big marking mat. You can put your object down on top of there and help scan. Theoretically, that should help you from losing tracking. Every one of these scanners that I've used has had its own quirks about it. This one, I haven't had as much time with as I would like, but we're gonna dive in and scan underneath of the body of that VS410 Phoenix and see if we can capture what we need on that black plastic to see if we can design ourselves a front engine cover. If we're successful with the scan, I'll be able to bring that into CAD, design up a cover, and then I should be able to share that with all of you. So if you're interested in this, let's dive in and see some more about how this thing works. First step with any of these black plastic scans is some sort of developer spray. This is just a dry shampoo, just enough of a coat to turn the parts slightly you know, brighter, something easier for the scanner to pick up. This is just an inexpensive dry shampoo. From there, we go over to the scanning software. You can see just how wide of an area this is capturing at one time with the scanner. I like the chart that it gives on the side as far as what the reading is and how it's picking up. I think that that's a, a little bit easier to use than some of the other softwares that I've used in the past. So that was something that I did appreciate. And again, the width of the area that it picks up at once made this scan super easy to capture with minimal movement of the scanner required. Now, of course, that can cause dead zones without getting all the off angles and things like that. But for the data that I knew that I needed for this scan, this was capturing all of the detail. And in the end, the accuracy of this scan was dead on. The point cloud is gives you a decent idea of what it's going to actually mesh together. Completed the scan, we only had to do one scan for this, even though the Revo software does allow for stitching multiple scans together. Something that I'll definitely get into with more complex parts 
in the future. The one click edit on this was completely effective. Just clicked through and allowed it to do its meshing on its own. I didn't have to do any adjustment of the sizing or anything like that. Just as it decided was good to go. I did use the isolation tool here to get rid of some of those uh, bodies that weren't connected. In this case, it's the tires of the model. Those weren't important to the data that I needed. From there, I brought the mesh into Fusion 360. I had a mesh file of a 2JZ and I just scaled that to fit. And then from there, I used mesh sections and fit curves to mesh sections to determine where the mounting points were. Uh, went through there, just trusted the data as it sat. And again, everything in the end turned out to be extremely accurate. I was able to keep parts very close to what the mesh said and turned out to be just about dead on. I only used about a half a millimeter of clearance in areas and we didn't have any interference. From there, I took the parts over to the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, printed these out in the two color option here and the print quality as always was excellent. This is printed out of PLA carbon fiber. Not necessarily uh, needed for this, just standard carbon would work, but I do like the finish and the, the weight that this PLA carbon fiber gives from Bamboo Labs. After printing the base part, I took the body off of the Phoenix and dropped it in place and was pleasantly surprised that everything was dead on. From there, I just needed to add the four screws to hold it in place just to make sure that everything was indeed ending up or lining up as it appeared by eye. The clearances to the servo, the clearances to the inside of the inner fenders, everything worked out great. I had a little bit of detail with these with some Pascal markers just a little bit of enamel paint marker move some of the paint around with a pick to get it into the corners and add detail so we knocked this project out pretty quickly everything turned out exactly as i had hoped the scan that i took of the front end of this chassis was a little bit different experience than i had had in the past and in a good way normally i spend a lot of time doing the actual scan and I felt like I didn't have to do that as much with this, just with the wider capture area, or at least that that capture area was truly grabbing point data from that area. So the, the entire scan time that it took for that front end was much shorter than I had uh, typically expected to see. Now, I didn't go through and do such a detailed scan that I could 3D print existing parts off this. But for me, that's not how I end up using 3D scanners. For me, I'm usually using them for reverse engineering so that I can then engineer parts off of those, if that makes sense to you. If you're looking to take and scan an existing part and then directly 3D print that part, it is going to be a little bit different workflow and it's going to take you more time and maybe some trial and error to get that part as exact as you like. I will say that the software side of this Revo Point is one of the most enjoyable that I've had with 3D printing. The software is intuitive and it seems to have a lot of tools built into it, especially for the price point of this scanner. One other little thing that I found to like on this scanner that I've never had on any of my other scanners is a physical button on the back side. And you can use that on this scanner to pause and start scans may not sound like a big deal to you, but if you've been scanning for a while, you may know that you will be scanning and oftentimes you wanna reach over with your mouse and click or pause uh, to either you know, finish the scan or just you know stop and then kind of re-get yourself situated with maybe a cord out of the way or just your hand in some sort of less contorted position. But that button on the backside of this extremely helpful and something that I absolutely will get used to having and will have a hard time going to anything else that doesn't have that. The scan data that I captured here was super accurate. I didn't actually even go through and confirm any of the dimensions, like to just say, oh, well, those dimensions should be about here and then check my scan against it. I just trusted it and went with it and I it was dead reliable. The flat areas were nice and flat, sharp edges can get rounded over in 3D prints. It's very common and it does happen in this one as well, but they're not so melted that you can't define those corners. I was really happy with the quality of the output of the mesh files. I'm looking forward to using this scanner more and more, taking and doing multiple scans, merging them together, 
testing out the alignment functions of this software. Currently, I'm using Revo Point's uh, 5.2.3 software. Revo Point is launching this scanner on a Kickstarter, and you can go save a decent amount of money if you order it through the Kickstarter. They did provide me with this scanner, but the review side is completely on my own, of course, and I just I am very pleased with the overall results. Currently, I think I can say that this will likely be my go-to scanner at this point until things progress even further. But for the money, for an entry level, anyone who's into like the maker hobby, whether that be RCs, 3D printing, just whatever space it is, if you're kind of a hobby enthusiast, if you're interested in 3D scanning, this is one that I would put high on the list to recommend. If you'd like to pick up the file for the 2JZ model that we created for this project, go check out my website. I've got it linked below, as well as links to the Kickstarter for the Revo Point. Thanks again to Revo Point for supplying this new scanner, and thanks to you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already. With that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.